Hi, we're here again with Eric Edmeads, dear colleague from the Transformational Leadership Council. Eric, you know, I just returned from Amsterdam traveling Europe. The coronavirus has a grip on everybody. And one of the things I noticed that there were some people in my classroom that were so freaked out by it. And just the stress level alone is going to compromise somebody's immune system. It's going to make them way more susceptible just being so uptight. Now, you've got a video that's going out to a lot of people about coronavirus and nutrition. I'd like to talk about that for a moment. And I also know that one of the things that you do as a part of your programs is you help people calm down by breathing. And yeah. I believe that if we could just drop in for a moment, relax our shoulders, and just letting our shoulders go signals the old brain that says you're safe. There's no imminent threat. If you could then relax your forehead, you send a signal to the midbrain that says you're calm, you're safe, or people around you are going to help. And then if you could just breathe, and breathing I know is really key for you. Breathing for me is that part that helps us connect to the neocortex, that thinking part of our brain. So if we can drive out the stress, get a sense of calm, connection, safety, and balance, we're going to really help everyone out. And what do you have to say about it? Boy, you know, Paul, I, I um, it, this is a, an interesting thing. So, you know, we're, stress, is, stress can be an incredibly powerful and good thing when it's short term. You know, if I've got a tiger chasing me, then I think I want to have some stress in that moment. I want some adrenaline and, and I don't want a little cortisol. And that's maybe going to help me to survive that situation. But long-term pervasive stress, we absolutely know, pushes the immune system down. And, and, and so what, what, that mean, it, it, what that means is that if people start really stressing about the virus, the irony is, is that that stress is going to reduce their capacity for fighting it. And, and, and so I think that's a really important distinction. I love what you said, like relaxing the forehead, breathing properly, all those things, because everybody thinks that their body responds only to their emotions. But what they don't remember is that their emotions respond to their body. If you breathe deeply, Nobody in nature breathes deeply unless they feel safe. So when you that's breathe right. deeply, you tell your body you're safe. So I think yeah, that I, stuff's really important. My meditation teacher helped me understand that breath is that invisible link between the mind and body. If the body is stressed, it's going to affect the breathing, which affects the mind. If the mind is stressed, it affects the breathing, and that affects the body. So just starting with a nice, smooth, connected breath immediately puts you in a place that's advantageous. Do you know, Paul, like speaking of the, of the, the tiger here, you know, I, I have had it happen. Um, I, I literally walked around a bush one day and there was a lion uh, like about 15 feet away from me. How do you breathe when you see the lion? <gasps> you take one sharp breath in and then you hold your breath to be quiet. And so then you breathe shallow to be quiet because if you're needing to be quiet, the environment must be dangerous. And so therefore you start producing epinephrine, adrenaline and cortisol. And yeah. so we can absolutely do the opposite, walk around the corner and go. And I think everybody right now should be making sure that they get outside and that they get some fresh air every single day, breathing calmly, even though the news is doing everything they can to freak them out. But I think Paul, you know, the video that I put out, like, the reason I put it out is I frankly didn't want to put a video out. I, I, I even make a comment in the video that there's a ton of non-experts making videos. I mean, you know, even in the video, like uh, President Trump makes a couple of statements about it. And I don't mean this as any comment on President Trump. I mean, everybody's doing the best they can. But one minute he's telling us that it's like, it's no worse than the flu and it's already basically contained. And a week later, he's banning travel from Europe. Like we are, we're in a place where we're confused and we don't know what's going on. But why I decided to put that video out is nobody was telling us the truth about one of the most important things. And that is the last line of defense is your immune system. And so these discussions about breathing correctly, getting natural sunlight, like it's important to get out and get, yeah, okay, maybe you're locked in at times, but if you've got to get out and get some sunlight on your skin. And then of course, as you know, I'm always going to be the advocate of nutrition. We've got to be eating the right things. And right now is not the time for eating the wrong things. Good point. And the, here's, here's the thing about the immune system. You know, for a virus, we don't have an inoculation that we can take to protect ourselves from viruses. The only thing that protects us from viruses is our immune system. And if our immune system is compromised, that's when people are most at risk. And that's what all the messages 
have been pointing out the most at risk population. So let's face it, if we're all at risk to some degree, what can we do nutritionally that's going to be able to help us fight the battle that may be ahead for us without all the stress and worries of what's going to happen? You know, uh, Paul, the way I kind of think about it is like, let's say you live in a really big, you know, you know, in really big mansions, the really wealthy, they have like, they have that like safe room, you know, there's the safe room, you know, they might have an alarm on the outside, they might have a fence on the outside, they might have 911 to call the police. These are all the outer defenses. Well, the outer defenses are wash your hands, don't touch your face, social isolation. These things are the outer defenses. But when it really comes down to it, the last line of defense is your safe room and your safe room is your body and your body is your immune system. And so I think the way every one of us should be thinking every day right now is, is what I'm doing right now supporting my immune function or is what I'm doing right now straining my immune function? And so, for example, drinking back, you know, I won't mention any name brands, but drinking back soft drinks made in Atlanta, Georgia or, or fast food and deep fried and, you know, all those things are not going to support immune function. And on the other hand, making sure that we're getting really good, healthy, fresh vegetables where we can, that seasonal fruits, healthy fats and proteins, that's what our body needs. Like, here's something. I, I'm amazed. People don't really understand what proteins are. Insulin is a protein. Antibodies are proteins. Our body breaks down the proteins we eat, turns them into amino acids, and then rebuilds antibodies. If you're not getting the full suite of amino acids, if you're not getting complete proteins, your body doesn't even have the ability to fight. So right now, yes, socialization, social, or social isolation, wash your hands, don't touch your face, wash the surfaces, of course, do the things the CDC is telling you to do, but make the, sure the safe room is locked, you know, eat well, stay hydrated, rest, get sunlight and do your breathing exercises. Yes. A little walking outside is going to be so helpful for you. If you can't go to a gym because it's a bunch of people in there and touching all the other stuff. Don't worry about it. Don't stress that, that you're not in the gym. Go for a walk. It's the one thing, so one exercise that absolutely has to be done. If, you're, if you just went through surgery, for example, what are they going to tell you to do? Get up and walk as quickly as it can. It keeps everything moving, yeah. keeps the body fluids moving through the body, and it's flow that's really necessary. I love the fact that you said when we're under stress, the first thing that we do is... <gasps> and we lock it in. We don't allow anything to flow. So by all means, please stay calm and carry on. <laughs> Be calm and carry on. So what would you say are the top three things that we could do, Eric, to really help us keep that safe room at its best? Um, I'm going to say that I don't think it's three. I think that what we absolutely have to do is make sure that we're getting some fresh air. So yes, you might be spending a lot of time indoors, but you got to get outside and get some fresh air. You got to get movement. You really have to get movement again, go out and get the fresh air. One of the reasons you need movement is your lymphatic system doesn't have a pump. So your blood system has a heart and it pumps it around your, your air system has the diaphragm that pulls air and pushes it out. But the lymphatic system has no pump. The only thing that moves lymphatic fluid, which is the fluid that is cleaning your cells and protecting you, it, the only thing that moves it is muscular movement. So you've got to move. Then the third thing is you've got to eat right. You've got to make sure that you're getting the full suite of vitamins and minerals as best you possibly can. If you're concerned about that, there's even some supplementation taking zinc, magnesium, vitamin C. And I'm not usually a big fan of supplements, but right now, if, you, if you're worried about getting it from your food, I would make sure that happens. Fourth thing, and this isn't necessarily in order because I think this is maybe one of the highest priorities is water. You've got to stay hydrated. It's really important to be drinking a whole lot of water. And then here's another thing, um, sunlight. And, and you know, I, I put this in one of my videos and then I had a bunch of people going, I was completely with you until I saw you saying about getting in the sun. The sun is dangerous. I'm like, oh my God, the sun is the source of life. And your, your entire immune system is bolstered by you being in the sun. I'm not talking about going outside and getting sunburnt. I'm talking about getting 10 or 15 minutes of sunlight. And That's then right. the last thing I want to suggest, and this is a little tough, bearing in mind that a lot of us are being told we need to be socially isolated, but do the very best you can to maintain a sense of connection with loved ones. If you are isolated with people, then be with those people. If you are unfortunately not around a lot of people, then you know what? That's what Zoom and Skype and, and WhatsApp and all these things are for. Stay connected, have heart-centered conversations, communicate your, your real feelings with people and create a sense of that because that sense of community builds a strong immune system as well. So it's not three things, it's a few more. 
Yeah, Blue Zone. <laughs> Blue Zones really talks about this, but the, one of the things that we're discovering about it is it releases oxytocin, which is yeah. the best thing for a human body. So <clears throat> reach out and connect, stay with the loved ones, be reassuring, have a positive mindset. I, I think that mindset is probably one of the most critical things to helping boost what I, what Paul Pierce all years ago called super immunity. If you find a hot spot in your body, then meditate, calm down and raise it from hot to warm. If you have a cold spot in your body, meditate for a few moments and raise it from cold to cool. Just a simple shift in the way your mind views what's going on with you will actually trigger a positive immune response within you. Absolutely. Paul, I really uh, I appreciate you uh, reaching out to make this connection and share this message with the world. This is, um, you know, this is a, a dicey time for a lot of people. And um, I think the more that, that we can get out there and share messages of hope and real strategies for, for helping people, the better. Yes, you know, this, really I, I was always reluctant to make that first video because I didn't want to be like adding to fear and adding to hype. But when I, when I see governmental agencies and the CDC and all these people and all they're talking about is the standard antiseptic you know, methods of avoiding infection, I'm like, wait a second, nothing, nothing could be more important. Then when, when we're talking about something that looks like it's spreading so far and wide, then keeping our own health right, this is the time for that. So I really appreciate you helping us share the message. Yes. And everyone, stay healthy. All the best. Thank you, Eric. Thank you.